Chapter 2.7 New Friends Jimbo was smiling, waiting for Retta to answer who she was. She had ominous warning after warning of who to trust. First from Tobias, then from Vikri, and now another random stranger popped up to meet her. The only person she felt she could trust was Zodo. Hello, you can call me Red, she told Jimbo, intentionally leaving out her last name. Where are you coming from, Red? Jimbo asked with polite interest. It's rare I see outsiders like us. Earth. Oh, wow. How'd you end up here? A crash landing. She intentionally kept her answers brief. Mmm, I saw that in the tree line. Zoto interjected, sensing Red's hesitation. Jinbo has been here a long time, Red. Yep, Jimbo added. Many moons. He is a good friend, Zoto said, smiling. He has told me many stories about space. It's nice, but not as peaceful as it is here, Jimbo said with a smile, then focused his attention back to Retta. Speaking of which, did you come here with that other guy? Retta's gut dropped. Tobias? It's rare to have one visitor, let alone two. She wanted to lie, but no excuse could cover up two outsiders arriving on the same day. Yeah, I was with him. Why? Hmm. Jimbo hummed it low in his voice, piecing together his next words. How long have you been with him? Not long. Do you... He hesitated, as if feeling intrusive, but at the same time, obligated to ask. Do you know him well? Not really, no. Hmm. He let Retta's ignorance hang idly in the air of conversation. Well, I would just be careful if I were you. Careful, Retta thought. Everyone is telling me to be careful. Why is that? He has a past. A bad past. Jimbo stopped, realizing this was too much for an introduction. I do not want to scare you, but you should know. I knew a lot of people out in space, so if you want to talk more, my home is on the outer edges of the square. A lot of people, Retta thought. Maybe I can get some answers on Tobias, and even a lead on my mom. Either way, Jimbo finished, you are in good hands with Zodo. I am happy to see he's looking after you. Thanks, Jimbo, Zodo said. Jimbo put his hands together and bowed to Zodo and then to Retta, leaving them and heading back to his hut at the edge of the forest. While Jimbo went to one side of the city, Zoto took Retta to the opposite corner of town, hidden away from the hustle of the public square. Zoto brought Red to the husk of a dying tree, its bark gray and dry to the touch. He gestured Retta inside the makeshift hut. His makeshift hut. It looked like Zodo took scraps from around town and fashioned them into whatever he could. A hammock bed made from discarded brown and wilting vines, a blanket made from torn leaves laced together, and a desk of assembled planks of broken wood. Please, Zodo said, offering the hammock to Red. For you. Uh, Red looked, seeing no chair for him. No, it's fine. This is your home. You are my guest. He already saved my life. It's okay. Zoto sat on the floor, crossed his legs and arms, and smiled, gesturing with an open palm to the hammock for Retta. I have my seat. His stubborn politeness came out the victor. She sat on the hammock of vines, still feeling the dampness of her clothes as she rested. So what'd you and Vikri talk about when I left? A favor she owes me. What does she owe you? A new ship. Zoto said with a coy look in his eye. For you. Retta sat up in disbelief and shock. An electrifying surge of excitement fluttered in her chest. She could have squealed with how giddy she was, but it felt too good to be true. No way. Way. You're serious. Serious. When? Tomorrow. After the ceremony. Retta was positively brimming with joy, and it made Zoto smile and kind. 
This is too good to be true. She shook her head, still trying to wrap her head around Zoto's kindness. It doesn't come free, Zoto said in a teasing voice. You gotta make me a promise. Of course, anything. Promise you'll take me to the stars with you. Retta smiled. Promise, even if that stubborn sage won't let you. Retta's eyelids grew heavier by the moment. The day caught up to her. She went from Tobias's ship to a crash landing, to a hidden jungle city, to a vision of her younger mom with the baton, to this. It'd been a lot in one day, and her body was finally calling it quits. Thanks for letting me stay, she said. Do you have clothes I could change into? Zoto rummaged through a small dresser he made, pulling out an identical set of robes as his. I apologize. I don't have much more. It's okay. She smiled, and Zoto left for Retta to change. When he returned, she looked like him, wearing white robes and a belt cinched by vines. The flowing fabric contoured to the shape of her body. She would have matched Zoto perfectly, if not for her damp, red scarf. He blushed when he saw her, his pale, ghostly cheeks turning bright red. What? Retta asked. Do I shine like a star? You look... pretty. Zoto said with boyish nervousness. Thanks. Here, let me take your scarf. Red recoiled away, gripping her scarf tight. No, it's okay. I don't mind that it's damp. Oh, I'm sorry, Zoto said, feeling as if he overstepped. I didn't mean to. N no, no, Red calmed him down. It's just special to me. Thank you again, Zoto. While she nestled herself in the vines of his hammock, he made an impromptu bed of leaves on the ground. Within minutes, she found herself nodding off into sleep on this distant planet. Yet, she awoke in the middle of the night, as if called by something. Out of habit, she felt for her pockets, needing to feel the safety of her notebook and baton. She realized quickly these robes had no pockets. Her belongings were in her clothes. She stepped out of the hammock and saw that Zoto was gone from the floor. His bed of leaves was empty and her baton and notebook were nowhere to be found. Did he really just steal my things? With heightened suspicion and the tools of her trade missing, she stepped with a skeptic's discretion. Rounding the entranceway, she found Zoto sitting at the edge of the canopy, with his feet dangling above the dark water hundreds of feet below. He was studying the baton and reading her journal. The baton glowed softly as he held it, distracting him. Retta tiptoed behind him, hovered over him, and snatched her journal from his hands. Who taught you to steal someone's stuff? I I'm sorry. I was not stealing it. It called to me. You just took it? After what that hag said about people wanting to take it? I, I am not taking it. I promise, he said. The baton simply glowed, and I wanted to read about your mother. She was pissed. First, Tobias warned her. Then, Vikri warned her. Then, Jimbo warned her. Everyone warned her to watch who she trusted, and now the one person she thought she could actually trust was snooping through her belongings. Her anger was nerve-rattling. She felt her muscles tense and her forehead throb. She was ready to lay into Zoto and say how he betrayed her trust by going through her things, but he just looked back at her with innocent curiosity in his eyes. She had to collect herself. Retta breathed deep, stopped her knee-jerk reaction from kicking in, and let her muscles relax. Zoto was acting on curiosity, and somewhere deep inside Retta, she knew that same curiosity would have called to her, too. Zoto smiled in an attempt to diffuse the tension. He seemed incapable of malice or ill intent. I am sorry. I just wanted to know more about the stars. She sighed exhaling the tension and anger inside her. It's all right. She playfully snatched the baton out of his hand, bopped him on the head, and sat beside him with her feet dangling over the water. He looked to the sky, daydreaming, but the stars were hidden behind the canopy. While he was lost in thought, she played with the glowing baton in her hands. She'd never seen it glow and pulse with this much energy before. I think that baton is how you find your mother, Zoto said to Red. I cannot explain it. I just feel it, like it connects us, like the constellations between stars. How do I make it work? 
Zoto smiled. You do not. You cannot make it work. It simply is, and you learn to be one with it. She hit his arm. Ugh, why are all of you tree people so cryptic? I can't explain it. The sage will know more tomorrow. She owes me answers. Why? Because of this ceremony thing? Soto nodded, but said little more. He looked back to the stars and changed the topic. I read that your mom was a storyteller. Yeah. Do you want to write like her? Yeah, I do. Can I be a character? You? He nodded. Well, I don't know how interested people would be in tree people, she teased. But maybe I could add in one swamp kid. Zoto kept his eyes trained on the sky above, lost in thought. Yeah, that'd be nice. Maybe Zoto, the stargazer. He closed his eyes, and blinking fireflies surrounded him. He took a deep breath, exhaled, and blew away the fireflies like the flame of a candle. Time to sleep. He stood up and went back to his tree husk home. Again, I am sorry, Red. It's okay, Zoto. Good night. Good night. Retta stayed outside. She watched the baton's glow fade away as Zoto left. She stashed it in her pocket and for a moment thought of Tobias. If she were with him now, they'd still be stealing cargo ships, scrapping for food, and siphoning fuel while the ticker teetered on E. But she missed Tobias for a moment. Just for a moment. The junk dog's airlock doors shut behind Tobias. The pneumatic piston shot off steam. The massive central gear turned, and pressurized oxygen filled the hangar. Pulsing red lights flashed as Tobias and Alpha waited. Alpha's excited tail beat back and forth, bouncing between the cockpit and Tobias. Easy, girl, easy. Stray fur hovered in the air, and one got in Tobias's mouth. Alpha was eager to be home, whimpering as she futilely contained her excitement. She got this way every time they came back, and when the steady green light came on, Alpha barked, pawed at the latch, and released the cockpit's dome. The glass opened. Alpha sprung from her seat and ran to the skiff's wing. She looked back at Tobias, with her ears perked, her tail swinging, and her whole being wiggling with excitement. I'm coming, I'm coming, Tobias said as he got up and looked around the hangar. Huh. Something feels different. Something's missing. He couldn't put his finger on it. Alpha barked for him to come, and Tobias focused on her. All right, all right, hold on. He stepped onto the wing, knelt down, gripped its side, and dropped himself to the ground. Alpha waited up top, excitedly looking down at Tobias. He was beneath her, and when he looked up, a wad of drool dripped from her jowls into his eye. Ugh, Alpha, calm yourself! He wiped it away and stretched out his arms, the sign for Alpha to hop off the wing and into his grip. She crashed into him with 80 pounds of force that nearly buckled in Tobias's knees. My knees are getting old for this, Alpha. She hopped out of his hands and ran past Tobias, through the hangar, and into the common room and quarters. Hey, calm it down. You're going to wake up Lil Red, Tobias yelled, as if his yelling wouldn't have been equally as guilty of waking Retta up had she been there. But he didn't know that. Tobias sauntered through the ship, took out the link in his pocket, and flicked on the screen. In it, he had the leads he needed, the first steps to the freedom he was promised. But of course, freedom came with strings, and he hated the strings his freedom came with. Was he willing to do it again? Traitor. Reopen those same scars? Traitor. Trade freedom for freedom? Traitor. Live with that same regret? Again? Tobias wasn't sure. Even this deep in, he questioned himself. And he hated to admit it, but Jimbo's words sounded sweeter and sweeter the longer they echoed in his ears. It's some sort of relic. It must have been the baton. One that's worth a lot of money. Already in the palm of my hands. Maybe even enough to buy your freedom. Freedom. Tobias stepped through the common room and saw Alpha at the other end of the hall, 
sniffing the ground and stepping into Retta's quarters. The door was open, and Tobias noticed the back half of Alpha sticking out, stopping, and her tail standing up at attention. Things good there, girl? Tobias asked, now wondering what Alpha was seeing. She twisted around, her head now in the hall, and barked at Tobias for his attention. Tobias stowed the link back in his pocket, picked up his pace, and got to Red's quarters, where he saw the patchwork of mismatched blankets and sheets thrown messily off the bed. Her boots were gone. The nightstand was empty of her journal, her scarf, and her baton. God damn it, he seethed underneath his breath. Girl can't just stay put. Alpha sniffed the bed, and then with her ears up and nose pointed, she followed the scent back towards the hangar, to the missing skiff. Now I gotta find you, Tobias thought, stomping through the deck of the junk dog back to the hangar until the common room computer rang. Claire. Tobias stopped, weighing what was more important. Claire calling for Jimbo's info, or Red, gone missing with the baton. Alpha barked again. Claire could wait. First, Lil Red. <laughs>